Welcome back to Tom and Jerry's Militaria. Uh, we've been away for a, a few weeks, but uh, we're back now. We've got some new stock in, in the store. Um, if you want to check out what we've got, check out my store, which is Tom and Jerry Militaria and uh, see what we've got. If you sign up as one of my subscribers, I, uh, I regularly give out five, 10% discounts and free postage. And I also send out weekly updates of what's new and uh, what's fresh in the stock in the store. So today I'm gonna to show you a few items that we've um, accumulated over the last few weeks. First one is a K98 bayonet. As you can see here, this is a 1944 CRS bayonet mark and CRS standing for Paul Vergersberg and Co. Waffenfram, well, I can always get muddled up with the German stuff, Waffenfabrik Solingen. Um, I'll take the blade out there. As you can see, it's a nice clean blade. Um, I don't think it's actually being used. It's, it's not been sharpened, so it's in immaculate condition. On the Ricasso here, you can clearly see the um, the 44 CRS marking and on the other side we've got 847G. All the correct Waffen stamps are present on this um, on this bayonet and it's in it's in immaculate condition. That's all I can say about this. Um, I'm just wanted to show you very quickly the the only thing it doesn't have is the matching scabbard unfortunately. The scabbard is actually marked 1101 and it's a nice scabbard, obviously, that goes with the with the bayonet. So, yeah, so well worth actually having a look at if you're interested in looking for a decent, good quality, um, as almost as new bayonet, K98 bayonet. The the actual frog is actually marked, uh, I believe it's E O Gotza and Son. Yeah, Dorf, nineteen forty two. So, um, yeah. So um, lovely piece of kit if you're interested in having a look on the website. Now, what we're going to do, move on to now is just some of the smaller items that we've picked up. I like picking up small Nicky Knack items because I think um, they're, they're, they're interested in relatively low price for people to buy. These are Bakelet collar dogs for the Royal Marines. They were, as you know, in the Second World War, steel and brass and all that stuff was was very difficult to get hold of it or was used in ammunition etc so for badges they use like a plastic this is a this is a plastic collar dogs that would fit onto the collar of the uniform um, as you can see they've got little pins on the back that nip through the uniform on the collars and you've got the globe and laurels for the royal marines so yeah we've got plenty of those nice and cheap but um worth putting in any collection as they are a real piece of, um, you know, the Second World War for a relatively low price. So like I say, on the store, we've got plenty of these. So check them out and we'll move on to the next item. Now, I, I have quite a good collection of brass cartridge cases because I actually find them quite interesting. What I've got in front of me now is a selection of American and a couple other non-american which i will show you now now the first two or first three are where are they marked dm 42 and 43 now dm mean um head stamp is des moines in uh, iowa so yeah so um nice clearly stamped uh, Second World War 50 cal rounds marked from Des Moines, Iowa. So, um, yeah, so these would have been obviously manufactured to for troops over here for maybe the B-17s or the land invasion. I probably think more for um, B-17s over here because I've actually come, uh, come across quite a lot of 50 cal rounds from um, the Second World War aircraft use over here by the Americans. Um, we've got another one here um, marked M42. This is for Milwaukee in Wisconsin. And these were all arms um, ordnance batteries there, obviously making various types of calibers of ammunition in uh, one of 50 cal being only one of the various types that they have. Um, we've got a, another one here, which is marked 
SL, which is for St. Louis Ordnance Plant in Missouri. Um, yeah, I've got a, a couple of those. And I've got a couple here that I'm not 100% certain. There's another one from Des Moines, which is the which goes with the first two that I actually talked about. The second one here is I've got a I've got one which is a 12.7, and it's FM, which is Fabrique National, I, I believe Fabrique um, National, which is obviously I believe Belgium. But this is this is um, stamped 1957. So if anybody's got any information on that, just let us know. Drop us an email or put a comment in the um, in the in the um, paragraph below. Um, I've got another one here which I'm a bit unsure of. It's marked TW and it's got a four. Now I had a feeling this might be one of the the Finnish ones because Finland made a um, made a 50 caliber because they had a specific airplane that actually had 50 caliber guns on. Uh, I'm not 100% sure but there is also a an American plant in America that does actually have TW as a head stamp but the head stamp on this one is slightly stamped and if you look at all the other ones they're really sort of embossed into the bottom of the round but this one has just got a very faint strike T and a very faint strike W and a four use that the telephone so if anybody could help us out on that that would be greatly appreciated as well because like I say I'm still carrying out some uh, research into that um, we do have 20 millimeter rounds 30 millimeter cannon shells and a, uh, a good range of 303 and 7.62 etc next one we got um these everybody will know what these are m1 grand charger not charger because that's a British one clips M block obviously eight rounds is loaded into here and in a specific pattern and that's inserted into the M1 Garand the eight rounds fire and then you get that ping when they eject out of there I've got a few of those um, I haven't seen too many of them for sale in the UK but I'm sure there are but I do have a few not saying I've got a lot but we do have maybe eight nine ten of these if anybody's interested uh reasonable price not over the top um quickly on to little personal piece of item now if anybody could actually help me i'm trying to identify this now i know it's a, a housewife or a hussif for um the soldiers to keep sewing a needle kit in there now I, I, there is a stamp on there, but I'm not 100% certain what it says. Now, I think I can see what looks like a four. Now, it's the color that gets me because you've got the RAF ones, which are in blue, and generally the Army ones are in white. Now, it, the, I, I thought Marines and I thought maybe a foreign service, but I'm not 100% certain. So if anybody could help us out on that one. Now, the contents of this kit were actually sort of all British anyway, were like the needles, Varsity brand. You've got surgeon's needles. You've got a little pair of scissors that came with the sewing kit and the relevant different colors of yarn, which were inside. Now, I've seen these in my white um, Hussif kits or housewife kits. So I did think just a second ago then that perhaps it may be an officer's private purchase, but the contents of it are all standard military issued too in the white um, housewife. So I, I may be wrong there. But if anybody could, um, if anybody knows which um, arm of the um, services this is, please let me know. Um, now, I'm just going to go finally on to a little, uh, a nice little item I've picked up. Um, it's a private purchase set of First World War binoculars. Now, on the outside of this, you can see we've got JKC, and you've got, it's, you can see it's been used. The, the buckle's all in order, the, the straps are there, and it's in very good condition for a used item, which of course it would have been because it was used in the First World War. You've got some belt clips on here and you've got the, the shoulder strap here to secure the binoculars. Now inside you can see, it's, um, it's a, again, it's a nice used container. It's got 
it's got some wear around the top but uh, bearing in mind the age of it and the fact that it would have been used in um, in the first world war and in the trenches or maybe the artillery it's going to have some use but i always think this makes actually items more interesting than something that's just purely brand new and hasn't actually been used now i i found these quite an unusual shape uh, of a, a set of binoculars um the, the binoculars were made by a company a french company called zida in paris now i've i've carried out quite a lot online research and I'm, I'm really struggling to find much on zida in paris um there are sets of binoculars similar shape and style to this but i haven't really come across any with zida now you've got a single central piece tuning well, some tuning yeah, to assist with the focus uh, on here instead of having to do each individual um optic uh, lens so it's a lovely clear picture through here it's it's almost perfect and the quality if I, could, if I could show you through the inside of there you would think wow that's an impressive pair of binoculars for a small set of binoculars now what makes these interesting is they've actually been attributed to a, a chap called jk connell of the seventh royal scottish fusiliers now there is a jk connell which i've carried out some research on ancestry and the uh, national archives um but this this chap um, was actually it, it has down marked down on his medal cards various infantry regiments. So his final one where he was actually with was with the machine gun corps, uh, and then I believe he was uh, medically retired in nineteen nineteen from wounds. So yeah, the the J K Connor I think is quite a, a you know a uniqueish name. So yeah, there's there's some good little bit of research to carry out around this set of binoculars, and uh, on this chap's um, J.K. Connell Seventh Royal Scottish Fusiliers. So yeah, so a nice little set of binoculars if you if you're interested or you're looking for a really good attributed piece of history, check out my binoculars because I've got a couple of pairs in there. They're a um, reasonable price. They um, I clean up most of the uh, my items but there's i always think some people don't want them cleaned up some people like them but i like them to look respectable and if i was keeping this on my own i would have it all stripped down proper and and, and properly cleaned but i wouldn't obviously um repaint anything because it is what it is it's a it's a it's a used piece of um, military equipment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to cut that short so at now so I don't keep going on and on because um, obviously it's been a long time since I've done this so it's going to take us a little bit of time to get back into the swing of it again but um, every week now we'll be doing the, um, the new videos so if anybody's got anything in my store they'd like me to see or they'd like to see a video of you can either contact me and I'll do you a personal video of the item or ask and I'll do it on the on my YouTube channel. So uh, once again, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming to uh, Tom and Jerry's Militaria, and I look forward to seeing you at the next uh, video. Thank you very much.